So I think as soon as you, you get on a boat, I think you realise it's, it's more than a sport, it's, it's more of an adventure. And um, that sense of empowerment and freedom when you're out there, you'll realise that this is something that you really want to do and um, that you should be doing, you know. I think my type of sailing, where you go out by yourself, um, is completely different maybe to uh, other types of sailing where you're sailing with a full crew um, for shorter races. The stuff that I do is uh, long, long distance by yourself uh, in small boats that go fast. So I think my kind of sailing where you're in that kind of intense environment. It's it's an accumulation of things. It's um, it's the the speed, the uh, the intensity of it, um, and the challenge of being by yourself. For some people, that's more of a challenge. But for me, I kind of like being cut off from everything and by myself, making my own decisions with only myself to rely on. When I was uh, growing up, we always had a boat in the family. So uh, our first boat was a 24 foot uh, catamaran that was held together by Sikaflex that my dad had sort of spontaneously bought. Um, and I grew up just on that, going from sort of Langston to Benbridge in the Isle of Wight, back and forth. From there, we had a 30 foot catamaran that was a that was a big toilet blue uh, affair. There is a lot of bad things about offshore sailing, but it, it depends. It depends how you take them. And um, for me, all the pros outweigh the cons. But I mean, sailing's been compared to sitting in a shower and ripping up five pound notes. Wait, that you wouldn't sit in a shower. You would never sit in a shower. <laughs> Standing in a shower, ripping up five pound notes. It really annoys me that there's this sort of stigma towards sailors that says a sailor has to be, um, you know, a posh yachty from a wealthy background um, who, you know, is who just wants to flash flash a cash because that's not sailing anymore. Sailing is a professional sport that is pushing the limits far beyond what we ever thought it was going to be. Uh, well, this is like, this is tiller, this is where I steer from. And then from here, I've got all the controls for uh, the, the mainsail up here, just like the mainsail. We've got all the halyards on these clutches. Uh, that I can control taking sails up and down, uh, things like kicker here, all controlled back here, two running backstays, <laughs> not, not your fixed backstay, so you always have one on and one off, and they control the bend in the mast. And this is inside. So I've got survival blankets, first aid kits, uh, waterproof VHF radio, a whistle. These are all important things to a man in distress. Uh, GPS, uh, the autopilot, um, and then just the wind instrument and uh, the depth and log. Uh, no chart boss or anything, not allowed electronic maps. This is the solar panel that I use. And that just mounts onto the a gimbal at the back of the boat. And this is 100 watts, and even in a sort of dark grey day like this, it still draws something ridiculous like 5 amps. And it's all flexible and lightweight. And this is what I sleep on. And it makes really good for 
going around the cockpit and just sitting on. And so that's pretty much my bed. Going like that, and it's a nice big high collar. It comes up sort of out here. Big waterproof pockets. Um, it's just, it's like being in your own little environment. But that's it, and I mean, I'm around Britain. Uh, this is this is pretty much all I carry in terms of just living. And that's it, yeah. Brown Britain started, I remember sitting in bed um, for Christmas and uh, Santa had uh, given me um, this, this sort of notebook and I just sat there and I wrote pages and pages and pages of different ways that I was going to sail around Britain. See you in a while. Yeah, see you in six weeks, be good. <laughs> Day one, right, I started and um, we were going from Langston, had a big sort of, you know, everyone to say goodbye, uh, big preparation. I started the motor for maybe two minutes and it just died and <laughs> I just couldn't get out. And we were there until, well, I, me and my dad were there trying to fix it until everybody else had left. So uh, that was that was just the worst start, and it turned out to be so stupid, like water in the fuel tank. It wasn't even anything serious. And then I just bundled my way up the east coast, and the east coast is it's a it's a really it's an interesting place to navigate and sail, but it's horrid. Um, short, sharp waves, and as soon as you get northerly winds, this brings massive, massive waves, and. Um, because my boat is so small, um, there was a point which I physically couldn't go into that wind, into those waves. So it, you know, there was things I turned out. I was stuck in places like Harwich for a week and Grimsby for a week. The ships everywhere at anchor. Something to watch out for. I bumped into another guy who was sailing around Britain, uh, Paul Hardacre, and um, he brought a parrot with him, Finley. We, we sailed this massive leg, this sort of 26 hour leg, and um, we got in Grimsby. We were there for two days and I woke up just to this sheer, like, it was a screech, it was a scouse screech coming from his boat. And I just see this bird flying off into the wind. And I felt awful, I was just, I just, it's just, it's quite a helpless feeling watching your pet being taken off in the breeze towards Grimsby. As a teenager, because um, you know, you've got to think, I was actually quite young when I was doing this, I was 17 when I was doing this, and meeting people and having all these people wanting to help me and help with the projects, help me get round, it, it made me completely put faith back in humanity. Because as a teenager, you think that everyone is against you. Like, it's, no matter what, you go everywhere thinking, oh, that guy must hate me. You go past, you go past Scarborough uh, and Flamborough Head, and the water goes from this grey, which is the East Coast, into this idyllic blue, and suddenly you start seeing uh, wildlife, you start seeing porpoises and dolphins, um, you start seeing basking sharks, um, and it's 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 an incredible change. Then it gets really beautiful because the land suddenly becomes mountainous, and and having somebody there to share that, I think actually at some points would have made it better. And then I went through the Caledonian Canal because I had to get back for university, so I couldn't go around the top of Scotland. Coming back down on the west coast, went into Northern Ireland. Um, I went to uh, North Wales uh, and uh, my dad and his family are all from North Wales so uh, they were all there in their bunkers, the whole of them, so they were there with their flags and they had champagne and stuff. And uh, <laughs> Who inspires me? Uh, well I think the, you know it sounds so cliche and but it's like, you know it's my dad and it's it's always been my dad there's everything I've learned, everything I've wanted to be has has come through my dad and my, and my dad's given me tons of opportunities to to do what I want and you know I I did that and I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, we 
heading down there. I'm only outside, so uh, we As soon as I came around Land's End, I realised that, well, I could do it now. I could, I could finish quite easily. And um, I didn't want to, I know. The whole South Coast is just me dragging the whole trip on and on and on and until I've got like five days left to go till uni. And everyone's like, right, you've got to come back. So. But Ram Britain was amazing and it, it made me realise what I can do. What I'm gonna do, you know, in the future is really that really is pushing the limits of what what I'm capable capable of and what boats are capable of. You ask any sailor, what is your dream? And um, if they're a solo sailor and they race, they'll say, I wanna do the Vendée Globe. The pinnacle of the of of my sport, uh, of sailing, and of um, of sport in general, there's not many people that can go around the world in high-performance 60-foot boats and push to their ultimate level. So that's where I want to be. Ahoy. I think there's the the complete freedom of it, and it's the uh, and it's the empowerment that comes with freedom because there's not many things that you do that you are the decision maker and you are the in complete control of what's going to happen next and I, for me that's that means a lot